Hello everyone, this is Rashida. Welcome to my channel. My today's video is going to be on regression in rhino forest. I made a video on classification in rhino forest before, so I thought it's necessary to make a video on regression in rhino forest as well. Today we are also going to talk about how to use dates in machine learning. Before we never talked about it, so if you don't know how to use date data in machine learning, you have something new to learn today. We are going to use this housingdata.csv file for today's tutorial. And as usual, I'm using pd.readcsv method to create this data frame here. And you can see this is our data frame. We have ID, date that we are going to learn how to use in the machine learning today, price. Price is the one that's going to be our target variable today. We are trying to predict the price using all the other variables in the data set. Let's start with the data processing. All the other columns are in write format, but for the date column, we need to do some work. First, we need to convert them to the date time format. So pd.toDateTime, time, then we pass this column df date. So this is what it becomes. Now it becomes more readable, right? 2014, 1013 instead of this long thing here. There is another way we can deal with that. If you already know that you have a date column like this in your data set, so you can parse that date column in the read method itself. So pd.readcsv, then housing data.csv, you can pass this parse date and the name of the column. Here is the date column. We already have it first right after the root CSV method. So how to use this date column in the machine learning? You cannot just pass it like this as a strings. Uh, that's not going to work. We need to bring the useful information from these dates itself. Here we are extracting month and year from this date. And this month and year are going to be our training features. So dfdate.dt.month, that will extract the month from this date column. And we will have a month column. We will also have a year column using this dfdate.dt.year. Let's see the df again. We can see that we have month and year column towards the end of the data frame. Next, I want to check if there is any null values in the data frame. So df.isna.sum, this gives you the number of null values in each column of the data frame. And you see all zeros, that means we do not have any null values in the data frame. Let's define the training features and the target variable. So we do not need ID as a training features. And for the date, we already extracted month and year and put it in the different columns. So the so date variable is also not necessary. And the price is our target variable. So we cannot use price as the training features. The rest of the variables are our training features for today's video. Okay, so if we just draw ID date and price from this DF, that's our training variables. That's what we did, x equals to df.drop columns equals to id date and price and as we already mentioned price is our target variables if we just grab price from this df that's our target variable now we cannot use all the data for our training we need to keep some data for evaluation purpose so we can test the model if it's working perfectly we have a train test split method for that so x train x test y train y test is train test split and then it takes x and y as the parameters the test size is 0 0.3 that means 30 percent of the data will be our testing data and then random state 64. please feel free to use any other integers of your choice i could use 8 0 or 45 sorry 45 whatever it is so that's all the data preparation. Now we will develop our model. First, we need to import the random forest regressor from sklearn.ensemble method. And then 
I call a random forest regressor method and save it in the reg variable. And notice I didn't pass any parameter here because I wanted to accept all the default parameters first to see how it performs. Next, we fit x train and y train that we get from here, x train and y train to this array. Our model training is done. Now check how the model is performing. In pretty much all my regression videos, I used mean absolute error as my uh, evaluation metric. So today also I'm doing the same thing. I'm using mean absolute error as my evaluation metric simply because it's understandable to pretty much everyone. I will introduce some more evaluation metric in my future videos. So I will check the mean absolute error for the training data and testing data both. So first for the training data, we predict the price for X train using that reg.predict method. And then mean absolute error takes the true label Y train and the predicted label that we just calculated. And this is our mean absolute error, 26,238. So we do the same process for the test data. First, find out the predicted label for the X test and then pass our true label and the predicted label in the mean absolute error method. And we get 67,294. You can see mean absolute error for the testing data is much, much higher than the training data. So there is a serious overfitting going on here. We would like to improve that. For that, we need to refine this random forest regressor model. We should try some different parameters, not just accepting the default parameters. If you have been following my machine learning series, you already know how to use grid search CV method. So here I am importing the grid search CV method. Scalar.model selection import grid search CV. And then we decide what are the parameters we are going to use and what are the parameters. First, n estimators. I will try these three numbers for max depth 16, 18, and 22, max features, these three, and max sleep nodes. I will try 84, 86, and 88. Then we call this random forest regressor method again and save it in red one variable. Then we call this grid search CV method and pass this reg1 variable where we have this random forest regressor method and these parameters. Again, we fit X train and Y train in reg1. The model training is done. I should mention that it may take quite a lot of time, so please be patient. Now let's check the mean absolute error for training data and testing data again. And we see the mean absolute error for training data becomes 79,000 and for testing data becomes 83,000. So they're pretty close. See, we pretty much took care of the overfitting problems. And now let's see the best parameters. Reg 1 dot best parameters that the grid search CV method found. The best max depth was 16, the max features 10, Max leaf nodes 88 and n estimators 120. So I encourage you to try with some more parameters here. If you can see, I pass max leaf nodes 84, 86, and 88. And the best parameters our grid search CV method found is 88. Who knows, if you put 90 or 92, that may give you the better results. Or again, if you see the max step 16, 16 is the lowest number I have here, right? So if you put even the lower number like 14 or 12, maybe that will give you better results. You never know. So I encourage you to put some more different numbers here and try and then see if that improves your mean absolute error for both training and testing. If you are using this method on some other cool data set, please feel free to share that in the comment section. If you found this video helpful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching.